Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good night to my brothers and my sisters. Hallelujah. We'll be starting in the next few minutes. Tonight we're going to have a great time in the a time in the word of God. Hallelujah. So we give the Lord praise tonight. We give the Lord honor, we give him glory for another day, another time where we can come and share the word of God. Amen. It's a privilege for me. And the opportunity God has given to me and I'm I'm taking it very serious because we need the word of God. Hallelujah. We need to hear the word of God. It's our life. It's our life. The word of God is our life. It should not be a part of our life. It should be our life. So Father, we thank you this night. Thank you for this another opportunity you have given to me to minister to your word, to your people. I thank you tonight because I know your name is glorified. We, I give you all the honor, all the praise, all the glory. Bless every hearer tonight. I pray that this word that you're going to allow me to speak to your people spread all over French Guiana, all over the world. This word is going to go to the ends of the world and bless your people and bring change and transformation. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for that minshat anointing that spreads, that excels, hallelujah, and that multiply. I bless you and I honor you, God, for you are good and you are great and greatly to be praised. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Good night. Good night. Good night, Sister Tomiko. Tomika. Hallelujah. I want you to share. Share this teaching tonight. Spread it. Hallelujah. Evangelize with me. Spread the teaching tonight to your loved ones, to your friends. Put it in different groups. The word of God needs to be heard all over. The Bible said in Matthew chapter 24 that the end will come when this word, when the gospel has been preached to the utmost part of the world. So when you are sharing this word, you are helping to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. If you believe it is, and I know it is, and you and I know. So spread it. So lives will be changed and Bless and transform. Hallelujah. Tonight, I want to speak to you on feelings. Remember, the topic is the truth. The truth. We need to know the truth. And the truth will set us free. Jesus said in John 17, 17, Sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. So you need to know the word of God, which is the truth. Hallelujah. And Jesus, which was the word, John chapter 1. He said in the beginning was the word. So we need to know Jesus. Hallelujah. And he will set us free. So the truth of this gospel, the truth of the word of God, comes to bring change in our lives. It's not a word of condemnation but is a word of restoration restoring reviving hallelujah return and reconciliation reconciling us back to the father that's the gospel of jesus christ he came to reconcile us the bible said in second Corinthians chapter 5 god was in christ reconciling the world back to himself and he has given us the ministry, verse 18, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8, he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. So everything we preach, everything we teach is not to condemn, but is to restore, reconcile men, bring them to themselves for, the, for them to understand that we need to come back. Jesus has paid a price for us to return. Jesus has rebuilt that bridge that Adam broke, that bridge of fellowship. So we can come back to the Father through prayer, through Jesus Christ His Son. He is that bridge. So it's not a gospel of condemnation. 
It's not a gospel of doom. You're not doom. You're not finished. No, you're not. As long as you're alive, there's hope and there's chance. There's opportunities that's been given to you and I to come back to the Lord. Come back to the Father. Hallelujah. Jesus, I am the way. No man can come to the Father except through Him. So the broken relationship between God and humanity has been built back, has been restored. It's no longer for the Jews alone. It's for us. Anyone that believes, John chapter 1 verse 12, he said that Israel, to as many that accept him, that receive him, he gave them the rights or the power or the authority to become sons and daughters of Jesus Christ. Sons of God. Amen. Amen. So that's the gospel. It's not to condemn you and judge you and to criticize you. No, and to doom you. No. No, my brother and sister. The Bible said in John chapter 3, verse 17, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world may be saved through him. Verse 18 said, those that believe those that believe, those that believe shall be saved, and those that believe not is already condemned. Nobody didn't condemn you. You condemn yourself by not believing. I didn't preach a gospel of condemnation. I'm preaching a gospel of hope. I'm here to tell you there is hope for you. If you confess your sin, hallelujah. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised Christ from the dead, you are saved. Romans 10, 9 and 10, hallelujah. For with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation, hallelujah. And with the heart, we believe. So it's important for us to understand, brother and sister, there is hope. So I want you to share this hope to your brothers and your sisters. Share this hope to the world, to your friends, your loved one, the group that you're in. Share this hope of Jesus Christ. It's not a word of condemnation. There is hope for every living soul on earth. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what you have done. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. The call went out. God said, come let us reason together. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter the condition. He said, even though your sin might be red as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Verse 19 says, if you're willing to come, let me quote it. it said, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the best of the land. But if, you, if you're not willing, if you disobey, you shall be damned. Hallelujah, said the mouth of the living God. To this hope, I'm here to bring you hope. But this hope can be destroyed by our feelings. You know, I was teaching last night, and because... It, was it true? Yeah, was it Wednesday? The Lord began to reveal some deep things to me. And, you know, He was dealing with me. I don't know, but I know when God began to speak to any man, any woman of God, He always speaks to them about Himself first. Because a blind cannot lead the blind. And God was speaking to me concerning feelings. Hallelujah. And that is a destructive element. We can use it for the good or we can use it for the bad. But most people use it for the bad. Our greatest enemy is not Satan. Is yourself is the flesh as we call it the flesh and the greatest weapon that the flesh has is feelings mass destruction to many christian the reason why a lot of christian is not living the prosperous life and the healthy life is because of their feelings i realize that Every trial, every temptation that the Lord has allowed to come to us, every problem, God is trying to kill us. 
in the sense he's trying to kill self out of us. He's trying to kill the flesh. God cannot use a man or a woman that is alive to themselves. We have to be dead to the flesh, dead to self. That's why Jesus said to his disciples, he looked at them, he said, if you want to follow me, first you got to pick up your cross. Cross that represents suffering and shame for the gospel. People will shame you. People will say all that. Are you willing to pick up that cross? Poverty is not a cross. No way. Anyhow, and he said, pick up your cross. Deny yourself. Pick up your cross. Deny yourself. Crucify that self daily. That's the reason why one of the ingredients of the fruit of the spirit in Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 is self-control controlling your self controlling your flesh console, con controlling your feelings your feelings has nothing to do with the word of God it has nothing to do with your spiritual life and so many times we allow that to distract us to delay us and to destroy us at times. If we learn how to just do what God says. The Bible never says you live by your feelings. Say live by the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone. This is food. But by the word of God also. We got to live by the word. We are spiritual people. And spiritual people heed spiritual things. Jesus said the word that I speak, they are spirit and they are life, everlasting life. We are a new creation, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. We are brand new men. We are no longer permitted to live for ourselves. If we are a new creature, we have a new life and that life is, is in Christ Jesus and has been given to us. That everlasting life has been given to us freely. When we, when, we, when, we, when we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, He gave us that free gift everlasting life so we cannot live for ourselves anymore because self is dead we are dead to self we are dead to self and one of the greatest weapons as i said earlier of self is feelings we are dead to our feelings dead people does not feel Brother and sister, there are too many feelings in the church. Even the pastor feel like this. The deacons, everybody feeling. We don't want to hear what you feel. We want to hear what God is saying. God's word supersedes our feelings. If we learn just how to do what the word says to do, there is no way. There is no way we can be defeated. That's what Isaiah chapter 1 verse 9 says. If we are willing and obedient. Willing to what? Willing to study the word. Willing to, to, to learn and to study the word. Or should I say willing to know the truth. Willing to speak the truth. Willing to do the truth. Now, knowing it and speaking it is being willing and doing it is being obedient. If you are willing and obedient, obedient in doing the truth, you shall eat the best. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. Let me read it for you. I, I don't want only to quote it. I want, I want to read it for you to see it. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 19. 18 said, come let us reason together. God has sent out an invitation. He's the one that invited us. Hallelujah. So when people say, I invite you, God, no, God invites you. God is inviting you. 
So it says in verse 18, 19 in fact, Isaiah chapter 1. Hallelujah. Chapter 1 verse 18. Verse 19, sorry. It said, if you are willing. Good night, assemblies of God army. Hallelujah. And good night, sister Lovell. Hallelujah. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. It doesn't matter where you go. You can go to a land with that it has no food, that is in famine or whatever. The God is saying if you are willing, if you are willing to know the truth, if you are willing to speak the truth, and if you are willing to do the truth, you will eat the best of the land. But the thing that is hindering most Christians is our feelings. Why most Christians doesn't study the word? They don't feel like. Why they don't pray? They don't feel like. It's all about feeling. We got to kill it. We have to get rid of that feeling. I don't feel like. I don't feel like tell you good night. I don't feel like talk to you. I don't. Come on, brother and sister. Where are we going with those stuff? We have to learn to obey. We got to learn to just do. You see, the Bible said, when God told Adam not to eat the fruit, Adam told Eve, not even, don't even touch it. And the Bible said, when Eve got into a conversation with the devil, then she saw feelings again. She feel that the fruit is good for food. We don't have to reason the, God, the word of God. God said to do this, just do it. Just do it. Hallelujah. The word of God is not for you to reason with. It's for us to do. The Bible said don't be errors. James said don't be errors, but be doers. Don't let us be the people that TV talk about ever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth. We can never come to know the truth if we don't do. We have to do. It's a doing something. Jesus said in Matthew 7, as we read last week, not everyone that say, Lord, Lord, will enter, but those that do it, that those that do it, the will of the Father. It's a doing something, not a reasoning something. God said, love one another. He didn't say the reason, ah, oh, this one didn't deserve my love. Oh, he said, just love them. He didn't say love them when they're good and don't love them when they're bad. He said love each other. Just do it. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. That's where the problem comes. We allow our feelings. I don't feel like God. She hurt my feelings. Listen to me as a child of God. Let me say this once and for all. Nobody can hurt my feelings. You know what? I don't have any feelings anymore. Because my desire is just to do. It's just, you see, feelings almost destroyed me. Almost destroyed the ministry, my ministry. Almost destroyed everything in my life. This thing called feelings. So Wednesday when I came in, I, I was sitting there and I said, Get your feelings right, son. It's not about feelings. It's about what I say. It's but what I say. Man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word, not by every feelings. We have to get, get ourselves to get up. It's our feelings that is causing us to do things that is not right in the sight of God. We want to satisfy ourselves. We want to feel good. No, it's beyond feelings. Never do anything to feel good. Do everything to please God. Don't do it for your own ambition, your own self-gain. Do it because you want to please God. As long as you please God, it's okay. The Bible says when a man ways pleases God, but today our feelings lead to, towards us we must feel good 
The word teaches. You feel good, do it. That's what the word teaches. You feel good, do it. Feelings is not permanent. The word of God, the Bible said, heaven and earth will pass away, but not one drop of the word of God will ever pass away. That's when we live by the word, hallelujah. You and I that receive eternal life, feelings will kill you, but the word of God will continue keeping us and maintaining us. That's the everlasting life, the word of God that breathes that everlasting life in and through us. Let's kill that thing we call feelings. You're not coming to church. No, I don't feel. Mommy, feel like. <laughs> Father, help us. That is the one of the greatest weapon flesh has. Feelings. You see, the flesh cannot discern. The flesh can only feel. But the spirit doesn't feel. The spirit discerned. First Corinthians chapter 2. What did it say in First Corinthians chapter 2? Is it verse 14? Yes, verse 14. Look what it says. It says, Now we have received not, verse 14, but the natural man received not the things of God. For they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. The flesh cannot discern anything. The flesh can only feel. And God doesn't want us to live by that flesh. God doesn't want us to live by feelings. God does not want us. The Bible says no flesh can please God. So your feelings doesn't please God either. Somebody said to me, uh, but God cares about our feelings. God doesn't care about your feelings. God, God, for God is supposed to be dead. Can you care for a dead man's feelings? <laughs> Have you ever been to a funeral? And you say, oh, oh, the, the dead man is feeling bad because a lot of people come to his funeral. What foolishness would that be? Huh? <laughs> God doesn't care about our feelings. Don't allow people. It's, you see, we are people today like to hear things that make them feel nice. That's what the Bible said in the last days. They want they would not be sound doctrine. They would heap up teachers to say things that make them feel nice. God cares about your feelings. God, God doesn't care about your feelings. For God is supposed to be dead. When did God bless? Fulfill the promise to Abraham. Not when he had feelings. God said to Abraham, he was 86 years old. He said to Abraham, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make you a father of many nations. And God could not have do it right away because Abraham was alive. He had feelings. <laughs> Hallelujah! And in Genesis 17, when Abraham was whole now, God went and, re and, and repeat the same thing. I'm going to make you. He said, walk before me. Walk blameless. I'm going to make you the father of many nations. His wife ordered to begin to laugh because at that time, he was dead. <laughs> if you understand what I'm saying, he was dead. Please listen to this message right now. Don't just put your hello and disappear. Listen. It's important. And share it. God waited for Abraham to die. When Abraham was dead, then God could have fulfilled the promise. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Even when God wanted to bring forth John the Baptist, Zachariah and his wife, they were whole in age. They were praying for a son. They were praying for a child for years until they forgot 
But when the fullness of time came, when God knew that they could not do it anymore, he had to intervene. In fact, the Bible says she was barren. And God intervened. Hallelujah. Because the father, Zachariah, could not have believed it. He could not have believed it. And the angel said, for that you're going to be dumb. Man, I, don't, I don't give up. I don't give up. Then God intervened. That's why the Bible says when your mother and father forsake you, then God intervened. God has given me many vision and dreams, what he want to do with my life, with the ministry. But God is waiting for Richard to die. It must no longer be Richard, but be Christ in me, the hope of glory. And there's a lot of things God want to do with you and through you and with you. But God is waiting you to die. You have too much of feelings. Today you feel to pray, then tomorrow you don't feel to pray. Today you feel to read and study, tomorrow you don't feel to study. Today you feel to go to church, next you don't feel to go to church. God is cannot use you. We have too much of you're too much alive. And the thing is it that the devil uses those same feeling to destroy us, to bring us to the lowest. Those same feelings he used. So, Pastor, does God care about my feelings? No, he doesn't. He wants you to die to those things. Feelings of the flesh. God cares about you knowing him, you obeying him, you doing exactly what he says. Don't you know that Adam and Eve was blind? In the Garden of Eden, they were blind to 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 to, to feelings and, and all. The, they were blind to that. The Bible says when she was reasoning with Satan, then Satan convinced her, and her eyes was open. And the Bible says she saw. Okay, let me show you Genesis chapter three. All the time she didn't see it. I actually have the question: Was she not seeing all the time? Verse 6. And when the when the woman saw, was she not seen all the time? Listen to me, she was blind to evil. In other words, there were no feelings there. All they were doing in the Garden of Eden is just doing what God said to do. That's all they were doing. All they were doing, no feelings. But now Satan reasoned with her, and she was reasoning with Satan, and she feel, you know what? The blindness is not physically blind, you know. No, not when I say blind, it was not physically blind. No. But blind to evil, blind to feelings. They were not operating with feelings. They didn't feel like a, No, no, no. They were just doing what God said to do. They were living in the spirit realm. But Satan brought Eve down to that earthly level. Feelings. Explain to her why she should do that. Because, listen to me. Most Christians that operate in feelings always have a good excuse. Satan gives them a good reason. What, what? I feel, no, I, I feel it. I feel I was disrespected. I feel, oh my God. You feel God can't use you the way he wants to use you. So God began to speak to me and said, My son, you cannot continue with your feelings. You have to do what I say. What God said, that's what we must do. Don't reason it. Don't question it. Especially when he's speaking to you directly. When you have, because you and I are supposed to have a relationship with God. And that relationship goes to get stronger and stronger each day. That God will be able to speak directly to us. When God speaks directly to you, you don't need to reason it. 
You know, you support. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10, my sheep knows my voice. God said to go, go and love that brother. Mm -mm. You are the reason it's God. Satan would never tell you go and love that brother. Never. There's certain things we don't even do question. Uh, uh, uh. Satan would never tell you to go love that brother. Or love that sister. Or go and apologize. He would not tell you that. There's nothing like with God, I got a time out. I got to wait for my feelings because my feeling was hurt. Brother, sister, we got to do quick. The time is near. I want to read First Peter chapter 4. I was reading that today. I was studying on it a little bit. First Peter chapter 4. There's no more time for feelings. No more time for feelings. Brothers and sisters, there is no more time for feelings. Kill it! It's time to just do. Just do. What he says we do. He's the boss. The Bible said in the book of, of Romans, it said, To whomever you heal yourself to, you're the slave. So let's be slave of righteousness. Just do, let us do what he says. By this shall all men know that you are my disciple when you love one another. So just love. But we need to understand that same Romans 8 says, To as many that are led by the Spirit, we got to learn how to let the whole... Don't let us be led by our feelings. Let us be led by the Holy Spirit. To as many that are led by the Holy Spirit, they are sons of God. John 16 says, when the Spirit of God comes, He's going to lead us into all truth. And He is there. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Allow Him to lead you, lead us into all truth. He knows what is truth. He, know, he is the truth anyhow. He knows those true friends. He knows. Hallelujah. Let's allow him to lead us. Good night, my son, Garden. Let's allow him to lead us. And don't let our feelings lead us. Feelings cause you to be suspicious. But when you allow the spirit to discern, you're not suspicious, you know. And the spirit of God gives you the wisdom how to deal with situation. The spirit of discernment goes with the spirit of wisdom and the word of knowledge. Hallelujah. It's not feelings. As men are led by the feelings, no. As men are led by the spirit. Hear what it says in first Peter chapter 4. Let me put it in the New King James. First Peter chapter 4. I'm going to read the old, I'm going to see how far we're going to meet in this. It says, Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Hallelujah. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the loss of men. Feelings. Prepare yourself. He's not talking about suffering for lack of food. No, he's talking about people embarrassing you for the gospel because you preach the gospel they don't like you they put you aside he's talking about so, let the flesh suffer suffer the flesh because when somebody hurts you you gotta still love them it hurts the flesh get hurt not you the truth is about it not you get hurt it's the flesh and because we are in the body we you feel it but guess what it doesn't matter i'm going to obey god 
Hallelujah. I'm going to love you. The Bible says, Oh, no man, nothing but to love them. On con, you see, First John chapter 3, verse 1 said, What man of love the Father have lavished on us? The same love that God gave, He has given into, He has put it inside of us. The same love God is love. The same love God has demonstrated to the world, He has placed it inside of us. The Bible says, While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We didn't first love Him. He first loved us. So you don't have to wait for people to love you. You might see people acting funny with you. Love them anyhow. That's our duty. That's the one number one of our calling to love each other. Oh no man, nothing but to love them. The Bible said in Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been spread in our hearts by the Spirit who has been given to us. Let's get rid of this feeling stuff. I have feelings for you. You know the best love you can love your wife or your husband or your children with is the love of God, which is unconditional. The greatest love. Hallelujah. 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 So it says, We should not live the rest of our life for the flesh, the loss of men, but for the will of God. The will of God is the word of God. What God says we do. What he forbid, we forbid. Hallelujah. That's what he said, whatever we allow and hurt he allows in heaven whatever he allows us to do in the word that's what we're supposed to do verse 3 for we have spent enough of our past lifetime brother and sister we have spent enough of our past lifetime in our feelings and where did it brought us where did it put us nowhere we have spent i'm at verse 3 now first Peter chapter 4 for we have spent enough of our time, of our past lifetime, in doing the will of the Gentiles. When we walk in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, <coughs> drinking, parties, abominable idolatries, in regard to these, they think it strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of desperation, speaking evil of you. Yes, that's a suffering. Because you stop drinking with them. You stop partying them. Your new creation. The things you used to do. You do no more. They will begin to gossip you. They begin to slander you. They begin to persecute you. It doesn't matter. I have spent enough of my past life in, in vanity, in vain things, and in foolish things. And with feelings. You have to stop now. No more feelings. All I know now is what God said I do. Yes, Master. You think when I was in the army, when you're in the army, they don't ask you how you feel? They say, obey what I say. When the sergeant or the captain speak to you, you can't read, uh, I don't feel like, you don't feel like, what? When they took us in the bush, 12 o'clock, they came awake, all of us up, took us we are, you gotta sleep in your gun, you gotta sleep in your stuff. Took us a far away. Very far they took us. And told us to jump out the van. The truck, in fact. And the driver drove away. They told us to find our way back to camp. Up time of to midnight. And we have to move two by two. One over this side of the road. And, and when car is coming, we cannot let the car. We gotta jump in the bush and hide 12 o'clock in the night can you tell them you feel like we're in the army of god and jesus the captain hallelujah there's no more feelings in the army there is no feelings all they are in the army is order to obey once one time was we were running you know, and there was a pothole full of water, and I jumped over the, 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 cap, the sergeant 
go back and run in the water. I couldn't say I don't feel like. I could be punished for that. It's not like feelings. Stop it. Feelings comes from the flesh, and no flesh can please God. Okay, I feel like worship. Okay. God even listen to that one. Because worship is a life. It's a life. It's a living something, something that you live. Are you hearing me? You know? One, two pastors was driving one time, a whole pastor and a young one. And they were speaking about God and those stuff. And the young pastor, huh, if, you know. So he asked the old pastor, you feel that? The old pastor, feel what? He said, you didn't feel the presence of God? <laughs> the old pastor laughed said, brother, that's where I'm living. That's where I'm living. Oh my God. And sometimes we come home and we say, oh, the service was nice. Why? Because we didn't feel anything. It's more than a feelings. God is more than a feelings. The anointing is more than a feelings. He is real. We got to come to the place where we go past our feel. We say, yes, I know my Redeemer living. Whether I feel goosebump or not, he said, where twos and trees are gathered, he is in the midst. Brother and sister, you don't have to feel him. You just have to know that he is there. Hallelujah. You don't have to feel healed. All you know, you are healed. Hallelujah. You don't have to feel rich because you are rich. I was saying on Sunday, I don't feel like a man. I know I am a man. Hallelujah. I have proof. I gone past feelings. I know. Hallelujah. That's the reason why we have so much of homosexuals. Because they feel like a woman. Even though they know that. Listen to me. Every homosexual know they are a man. But they allow their feelings. They feel like a woman. They feel their trap in a man. You see the foolishness? You see the fool you with Satan have them in? You see how Satan caught them and, and box them off and lock them off? Because of their feelings. They don't feel like. God never calls to feel anything. He calls to do. Hallelujah. 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 Same with the woman. They don't feel like a woman. You are a woman anyhow. It doesn't change. It does not change. You can feel like a lion, but that doesn't make you a lion. <laughs> you can feel. Feelings is not real. It's fake. That's the reason why some people tell you, I, I feel, I have feelings for you today. Oh, I have so much of feelings to you. Tomorrow you're wondering if you see people have those feelings to you. Feelings comes and it goes. It's not real. But when you know something, oh, Rabba Shande Kayama. Hey! When you know what you carry, you know that you carry, you're the, your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. You don't have to feel him, he is there. So, it says, we have lived our life enough, the past life we used to live. We ain't dance enough. We ain't wine enough. We ain't drink enough. We weren't drunk enough. We ain't party enough. He said, no, you're changed, you're a new creature. Why go back to those things? We should not live our life no longer for ourselves. We should live our life to please God. Hallelujah. So it says in verse 5. They will give and come. You see, they hate you because you're not mixing with them anymore. You come out from among them. You're separated. Hallelujah. I say you've been separated now. You're out of from among them. Don't walk with them anymore. In fact, they didn't say put you out. Because you're not doing the things you used to do before. Hallelujah. 
He said, those people have to give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel was preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God, and live according to God in the spirit. Verse 7. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and say, Lord, help me to be serious. Holy Spirit, help me to be serious. Be serious. Hallelujah. And watchful in your prayers. Then it says, be serious with your feelings. And when you feel to pray, pray. No, it didn't say that. It didn't say be serious with your, with your feelings. It said, be serious and watchful in prayer. Whether you feel or you don't feel like, pray. Paul said, preach this gospel in season and out of season. Whether you feel it or you don't feel it, you have to preach it. Woe unto me if I don't preach this gospel. If I should allow my feelings, I wouldn't even be here speaking to you tonight. I would be somewhere, somewhere else. But I realize it's not about my feelings. It's about obeying God. What he says I must do. Remember the scripture I gave you last, last week? 1 John chapter 1 verse 5 and 6. He said, this is the message we have received from him. This is the message we have received from him. That God is light and there is no darkness. Darkness goes with feeling. Feelings goes with the darkness. There is no darkness in him. But if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we are lying and we do, and we do not the truth. We are not doing the truth. So the Bible said, let us be serious. Stop with your feeling stuff. Some of you already say, me feel like I go to church Sunday. Okay, that's the works of the devil. That's the devil dealing with you. He said, don't forsake the same of yourself together as some do, and that is final. I said, that is final. Oh, I feel people watching me. So what if they're watching you? I feel people like me. And so what? Jesus loves you. So, so the end of all things at hand. Therefore, let us be serious and watchful in, in prayer. And above all things, have favored love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sin. I rest my case. I rest my case. Let's get rid of feelings. God say, Thus said the Lord to you and I tonight. Let's get rid of our feelings. We cannot bring the word of God down to suit us. We got to go up to meet the word. We cannot take scripture to match our lives. We got to take the word of God. We are in the army of God. And what the boss said, that's what we do. What he says we will do. And the, as I told you in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19, if you and I, we are willing and obedient, we just do it. Don't discuss. Don't reason just do love your neighbor love your enemy just love them my feelings almost destroyed my life destroyed the ministry my feelings so i know what i'm talking about i said i know what i'm talking about These feelings, brother, sister, if we don't control it, if we don't get it on a submission of the word of God, it's taking us straight to hell. Straight to hell. 
and Satan is going to play with us with our feelings. He's going to play with that feelings. He's going to make a strong feelings. He's going to make a. He knows how to manipulate the flesh that God doesn't deal with. God deals with. God communicate in with our spirit. That we say, walk not according to the flesh. So you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh, but walk by the spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, don't walk by the flesh. The flesh is full of feelings, 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 feelings. Oh my God. He said, walk by the spirit. And let's stop living lies. Our feelings cause us to live in lies. Hallelujah. And so our feelings lead us to greediness, covetousness. Check it out. Most things people do is because they feel like. Most things they don't do is because they don't feel like. I don't sin because I don't feel like sin. I sin because God said I must not sin. <laughs> you see the difference? I don't lie because I don't feel like lying. I don't lie because God said I mustn't lie. The word of God said, do not lie. Hallelujah. If you allow your feelings to carry you, you are doomed. But you have hope today. God has spoken to you and I today. God has spoken to us today. Just do what he says. Just do what he says. The Lord told me, Go and apologize to some pastors. You think I'd be feel like? I said, then I said, no. Obey. 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 Obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than reasoning and, 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 and allow your feelings to carry you. I feel bad. I feel the... Come on! The truth is that youth is your flesh. And that's what God said to crucify every day, daily. Paul said, I discipline my flesh. Bring him on his subjection. Hallelujah. Right in my room, there's a, there's a pillow with a, with a thing. You know why? Because when sleep came, I just feel the cord. I just throw myself off. It's not about feelings. I got to pray. It's time to pray. Hallelujah. When you set time to pray, respect it. Don't let your feelings control you. Why is it you don't feel like don't watch television? Why people don't feel like don't watch television? Why people don't feel like don't eat? Okay, it's true. Some people don't feel like eat at times. Why people don't feel like do a lot of stuff? Why people don't feel like don't have any money? <laughs> That's what feelings don't... <laughs> I don't feel like getting money. You ever got to feel it? No. But why you don't feel, why allow your feelings to allow, why, why allow feelings to stop you from praying? Come on, brother and sister. Feelings is a, listen, I repeat. I'm going to say two things and we're going to close. And the word that you have heard tonight, I pray the word of God prick your spirit and that you will kneel down and say, Lord, forgive me. I had to do it. Lord, forgive me. I allow my feelings to almost destroy me. I allow my feelings to destroy, almost destroy the ministry God has given to me. Let me say these three things as I said. Number one, you can never be at peace with yourself. You that are looking to be at peace, I say that you are at peace with yourself. You can never be at peace with yourself if you're not at peace with God. And you can never be at peace with God 
if you're not doing what he says no way no way no 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 it's not possible it's no more time for gimmicks and drama and that's what feelings brings to us gimmicks and drama a whole lot of drama in our lives and God is saying to us you shall know the truth you shall speak the truth and you shall do the truth it's beyond your feelings your greatest enemy is not Satan is yourself the man in the mirror Jesus never said if you want to follow me deny Satan or push him no 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 he didn't say that he said that deny yourself pick up your cross and follow me your greatest enemy is yourself and the greatest weapon that yourself have that flesh has is feelings yeah nobody didn't teach me that the Lord spoke to me about it he spoke to me personally on Wednesday yesterday he said get rid of that I say yes Lord I say yes Lord I have to I'm a person with strong feelings very strong feelings when I when, when I when I say I appreciate somebody, I put everything, my old feelings in there, but God says, stop it. Love is not a feelings. Love is beyond feelings. Love is a force. In fact, love is God. That causes you. The Bible said, the love of God constrains us, compels us. It's not your feelings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Never married a man or a woman that tells you they have feelings to you. You're in danger. I said you're in danger. God, that feelings will go. I said that feelings will go. Because loving a person is not about feelings. Is about loving them and the true love is loving the person for who they are not what they can do for you you don't love a person for their beauty for their riches for the good looks you love them for who they are love the person and loving a person is beyond feelings is no win hallelujah are you with me i love you with the love of god and i know this word has blessed your heart share it spread it there's a there's a there's a, there's a main shack anointing the main shack anointing is anointed that spreads and this message is going to spread we're going to hit 2000 in the name of jesus 2000 here i'm not talking about just see oh I said, God, I'll just press like. No, people that are going to listen to this message. This, the power of this word is going to compel people to listen. God's army, we are in three days of praying and fasting today. Until Sunday, we are praying and we are fasting for our children to thank God for keep, keeping them safe throughout the vacation and they're going to school again. And this time we believe in God for them to be the best, bring home tablet and air, bring home certificate, certificates of excellence. Hallelujah. We speak excellent over their lives. So Sunday we're going to anoint them and release them in their class to be the different in their class and to do and be the best in their class. They are above and not beneath. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 28 says, the fruit of our body, they are blessed. They are above and not beneath. That's why we fast and pray for them. It's not just talking, it's putting in the work, hallelujah. Put in the time with God and spend the time and demand, decree a thing and God's going to fulfill, establish it. So we are in three days of fasting and praying, hallelujah. God is good. So I love you with the love of God. If you are, if I, I should not even say if you are blessed, you are blessed. I know you are blessed. I want to pray for you quickly. Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for your word. Those that are not well, I 
speak words of healing in their life. Receive healing. Receive your miracles. Hallelujah. Receive restoration. Receive the joy of the salvation of the Lord in your life. Now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke every feelings that the enemy is using to bring you down. Feelings go. In the name of Jesus. And let the word of God take dominance in your life. Let the word of God dominate our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I thank you Father. I thank you in Jesus name. Everyone that have listened to your word tonight. I bless them. They are blessed and highly favor in Jesus name. And I anoint their hands to share. To share. Father, let doors that the enemy has closed be open. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray for my brother, Garden, oh God, Maurice Naganda. Lord, you know him more than I do. But I pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, you're going to meet him right now at a point of his need. In Jesus' name, I pray. Thank you, Father. Give those that will listen and have listened and will listen this word. Lord, give them testimony. And we will not only be hearers, but doers. In the name of Jesus, have a peaceful address. You that are in French Guiana, I invite you on Sunday. Bring your children, bring someone with you. Hallelujah. And see what the Lord is doing. The Lord has done great things last Sunday. Hallelujah. The power of God is real. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, you that are not in French Guiana, that is overseas. Make sure you find a, let the Spirit of God lead you into that place where, where you're supposed to go, where he wants you to go. Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 5 says, you shall look for that place where God has put his name and there you must go. Hallelujah. There you must go. Now, because of the time difference, you're where you are the time is different from our time but we in french guiana and now is five minutes past nine i don't know what time is it by you okay check it up and see the time difference on sunday we are here 10 o'clock we start 10 o'clock in fact you can follow us live for the word hallelujah receive the word of god is in french and english hallelujah so you are welcome to follow us please don't just look at us only but make sure that you you share and also you you let us know that you're with us by saying amen if the word is touching you say amen or whatever let us know that you are watching just don't put the like comment we want to hear your comment if the word has blessed you say yes the word has blessed me the word is bringing change give us your testimony of what god is doing in your life true or up through the ministry of god's army hallelujah let us know what is going on. We want to know. We want to know. Now, you can also, every Thursday, I am, I am online at 8 o'clock. You can also, if you have questions, be online at 8 o'clock. You can put up your questions. Hallelujah. Amen. You can put your questions. I will take a look at it. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, be able to answer you and give you clarity on what you need to be clarified on. God bless you. I love you with love of God. Do have a blessed night. Don't forget to share. And most of all, don't forget that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. He's the Lord of my life. Make him the Lord of your life. I love you, love of God. Make sure that you receive his word and that brings change in your life. Make sure you receive his life. Hallelujah. You can confess your sin. Hallelujah. Believe in your heart that God raised Christ of the dead. And I tell you, you're saved. I love you with the love of God. Do have a blessed night. Love you. Love you. Love you.